Hello, everybody. I want to do something a little different today. Chris Vallone of Vallone's RC Hobby uh, did an interview with me, and I thought I'd share that with you today. He's a really cool guy, and uh, I'm going to put a link to his channel down below. So if you want to check that out, uh, be sure, you know, subscribe and give him a thumbs up. But uh, we're going to go ahead and play the interview, and it kind of tells what my channel is about, and that's kind of what the whole scope of the interview was for. So let's just uh, go ahead and get started. Hey guys, welcome back to Valone's RC Hobby. And in this video, we're going to do something a little different today, something a little special. And we're going to do an online YouTube interview with another RCer. And that guy is Dave Solomon. And if you guys have seen him on YouTube, he just passed to the 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. And he owns uh, the YouTube channel called RC Mod Squad. And he's out of Colorado. And uh, I've come across Dave's uh, videos in the past. And uh, what was really refreshing about Dave's videos is that he puts things down in nice, simple terms. It's uh, very easy to follow the video and even listen to his voice as he's speaking. And uh, it's not all crazy editing and it's really helpful tips to help you get your RC car back on the road because, you know, we're always tinkering with them. So I want to welcome Dave here. Dave, how are you today, man? Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I love it. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> That's excellent. Guys, if you ever see his videos, I love even the intro that he has. It's uh, like the cat, uh, not the cat in the hat, the, uh, the pink panther. It's just, uh, it's like vintage stuff. It's just, I love vintage, you know, and uh, it goes back to my old days of watching cartoons on TV. So, Really, really cool, Dave, and uh, I'm glad you can join me here. I mean, it's my first time doing a, a video or an interview session here with another fellow RCer. Me and, too. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be <laughs> awesome. I think it's something different. Uh, I haven't seen much or if, if any uh, RC interviews out there, and then maybe this is something that could continue on, and I'd love to have you back one day. Maybe we could do a whole WL Toys, you know, 144001 special one day, and that would be, sure. that would be real cool. So, uh, so I'm here in New York. I'm talking to this guy in Colorado, and I think it's really cool that we can reach out and uh, talk some RC. So, are you ready to roll? Sure, let's go. All right, let's do it. So, I've already stated your name. Let's state your claim and give me your favorite quote that you have, or what else did I say? Your message to the RC community. You know, there's a couple that uh, that stick with me. One of them is uh, buy nice or buy twice. You know. <laughs> Um, but the, as, as far as anything else goes, I'm, I'm pretty open to, to, uh, new ideas and stuff. And like the, I like to tinker and see, for me, yeah. that's a, that's a big part of the RC hobby is, yeah. is the ability to tinker. And I mean, I used to build engines for cars. Well, I can build an RC for less than a piston for my Mustang. Correct. So. I'm, I'm with you there because my background is restoring vintage VWs, and uh, it seems to be a dying art today or a dying skill right. to uh, so-called get your hands dirty, right? Um, and I think that's one thing, as much as I like the ready-to-run vehicles, I do miss the old-school ones like the Blackfoot, the Tamiya cars where they come as kits. And right. you sit there and you build with your father or your friend or something like that, and you know the car in and out. At sure. That. Yeah. 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 I yeah. And that's a lot of times I'll just take a, a new car and just disassemble it so that I know what's mm -hmm. under the hood. I'm not, I never did build a kit and that's just kind of what my channel is about. I, I, I had one RC car that I bought many years ago. It was a, uh, from Radio Shack and, um, I actually still have it, but, um, it was a golden arrow. And it was more like the Tamiya stuff. It's got the engine in the rear, uh, right. just a straight axle, no no rear suspension, but it did have suspension in the front. Just a basic little, ran on NICADs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And so when I finally decided I wanted to actually go out and get a legit 
RC car. Um, I went to the local hobby store and I mean, I looked at a couple of kits that they had there and they just made it sound like, oh, you've got to be a rocket scientist. And, you know, if you've never done an RC car, I don't think I'd start there. Hmm. Yeah, you know, and I'm thinking, man, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. So that's where I, um, I bought, entered, and I did buy something there. I bought a Nitro Jato and I love that car, Yeah, but I, I can hardly ever drive it anywhere. I had one place that I could take it and, um, I, they tore that place down one parking lot that was big enough to achieve the maximum speed of that car. Oh, wow. and they, they took that place away. So now I kind of, I had to reevaluate and that's really what my channel is about. Let's, I want to show people, I want to make them think about what they want to buy before they buy something. So if you, if you have a tiny little bit of room, you can yeah. scale down and get something like the, the 18th or 16th or 18th scale cars. And you can right. have a blast with those. You sure. don't have, to, if you've got a thousand dollars and you just can throw it up in the air and walk away from it, then, you know, go buy an RC, go to the hobby store and buy an RC car. Right. And, and I they'll, agree they'll with you. They'll sell you something. I think too, was I got back into the hobby about a year and a half ago after 25, 30 years. And, you know, being growing up in the eighties and the nineties. And I remember the prices back then. I mean, my mother brought, bought me. And when I was, I don't know, 10 years old or something, uh, the Tamiya Falcon. And at the time we bought it at a local hobby shop around the corner. And then they also built it for us. But in the end, it came out to about $350. Right. And that was a lot of money back then in the 1980s. And, uh, you know, my mom plunked that down. She, you know, she works her butt off and, you know, but today the quality that you get, like that, even at WL Toys, for under a hundred bucks, right? And it rips. I mean, it'll it'll blow the pants off of a Tamiya Falcon any day, right? So the technology is really uh, accelerated uh, to the point where I mean, when I jump back in, and I'm like, wow, this is what you get a lot for your money these days. You really, you do, you really do, yeah. Yep. And that and that's really what the focus of what I'm doing. If you if you want to just buy something straight out of the box like the the 144001 it's a great car straight yeah. out of the box just buy it and drive it but if you like to tinker there's a lot of stuff that is available for that particular vehicle you know you can i've got one and you can put the go to a brushless conversion there's just just so many so many ways to go with this but the the primary thing that i try to focus on look at where you have the ability to run you know, yeah. not what you necessarily may be your ultimate, what I want to do thing, but the thing that's realistic for you. Right. I've got a fifth scale buggy that, you know, I just, I can't run it in very many places. Yeah, it's got I a two cycle engine on it is, oh, wow. it's amazingly loud, you mm -hmm. know, so it's, it's going to be another one of those cars that I don't get to run very often. Now that you put it, all my WL toy stuff, I can walk out my front door and run it in the street in front of my house. Nobody even looks out. No question. And, and I, I have an arm of limitless, which is that sucker's a rocket. It's that right. formula one looking car. And, uh, you know, I bought it, I love it, but I'm in the same boat. I'm like, where do I run this thing? I, right. I literally need a runway or I need, a you know a big warehouse space at back in the back of the loading dock section where it's wide open and there's no curbs anywhere because once this thing hits a curb it's toast it's gonna right. i mean it's pretty strong uh you know build quality but uh it scared the bejesus out of me you know going 85 miles an hour down just a normal road that we have here and i'm in i'm, I'm in new york so it's like the hudson valley region it's a very congested area so there's not many large open area places that i can run this thing and right. so good point that, you know, the WL toys and I have a, some, something similar to that, the, uh, the LC racing uh, car. And yeah, I could throw that thing in a backpack and take it home and uh, just go in my, your driveway or just your block. And, right. you know, without having to really worry about smacking into something or it taking off down the road, you know. So um, very, very cool. But um, another question I got for you is how long have you been in the RC hobby? The first car I had was somewhere in the mid eighties and that was the, the okay. radio shack, uh, golden arrow. I Got wanted it. to way before that, but just never had the, I, I didn't know anybody. And that's <laughs> kind of what YouTube mm -hmm. has given us the ability. I don't, I mean, I don't know anybody else here that runs RC cars. I'm sure there are people here and I'm not 
much of a Facebook person. So I, yeah. you know, maybe if I got on there, I could find some people here. Okay. There's one guy at work that's into crawlers and his little, his whole little group is about crawlers. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so, and he's, he's, I, I actually bought one. I bought a gen seven, uh, red cat. Okay. And so Tony's, uh, invited me once the pandemic is over with, he's got a okay. place up in Fort Collins, Colorado that they, uh, that the city, I guess, set up so that they can go run their, their oh. scale crawlers. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to go try that. I haven't done that yet, but that's popular, popular on my niche. list. Popular right. niche right now is the crawlers. I never, I haven't gotten into it yet. Uh, but I went to a local hobby shop in West Palm beach when I was visiting down there and they had a whole section just in their showroom for crawling. Uh, and, uh, he says people get a kick out of it. It's so popular and right. people schedule times to come in and crawl. So it's a really, really amazing, you know, because everyone else, most of the people are bashing and, you know, launching off ramps or trying to just do fast speed runs. Uh, but the crawling, who would have thought going real slow and crawling over rocks would have been, you know, well, there's a, there's a big following on YouTube for that. Yeah. You know, there, there's a, and they've got some fantastic, there's some guys out there with some fantastic videos. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that have changed. That's coming to my next question is, you know, from the 1980s to today, in your opinion, what has changed in the world of RC? I mean, I think for one, it's crawling. I mean, I don't know how, uh, how far back it's been popular, but uh, like I said, I got into it a year and a half ago. I don't remember seeing crawling going on in the eighties. So, you know, in your opinion, what do you think has changed all this time? You know, the, the, the biggest thing that's brought about some of these changes, uh, I think, is exposure. You know, one of the mm. things. But yeah. the, the, the change in battery technology. Sure. I mean, I had an iCAD and I mean, gosh, you you had to you had to run them down before you could charge them back up or you got right. the memory effect in there. Then sure. you got the nickel metal hydride then the lithium ion. Now we got the lipos. Right. Mm -hmm. Um those things have have given you so much more runtime. Those little, I've got a, a ratchet. I mean, talking about a pocket car, it's a, I think it's a sixteenth or an eighteenth scale. They make a ratchet and a rampage. It's a high mm. boxing, and I mean, it's a nice yep. little car. And you can even mod that thing. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about doing a brushless conversion on one of those. Okay, but uh, it, it's it's you can carry it anywhere. You can just leave it in your car if you want. To, you know, right, but right. that's, that's the thing is more and more people. And that's one of the things my focus on YouTube is to bring stuff to people. Man, I didn't know that existed. And that's, you know, I, I see that frequently in my comments. Oh, wow. And I, I got a comment the other day that, uh, oh, I thought all those, you know, WL toys things were just Chinese junk and you've kind of opened my eyes. And he said, I'm thinking about getting one. So, right. That, that's what it, that's what this is about. You don't have to spend a grand to have a little car that you can have fun. And if you scale it to the area that you have, Correct. even even something the size of most people's garden plot can be a nice place to run an RC. Very true. And and I think to, you, you hit on a good point that the Internet is so huge today with it. Again, from the 80s, when I grew up, what did we have to wait for? The one month for the subscription to come in of Car Auction Magazine. Right. That was your information. And as limited as it was in a magazine, you know, I, I couldn't wait for that magazine to come in every month and see what the latest and greatest is. Right. Now, every night I sit down on my couch, I throw on YouTube, I throw on your channel and all the other channels that I'm subscribed to and see what else is going on. And it's amazing, like on the fly, how fast you can learn. I mean, I sat on YouTube for two weeks straight when I got back in the hobby just to get up to speed with the technology and the lingo. Right. And I mean, that's geez. a big thing right there, learning the language that everybody speaks because yeah. it's, it's kind of got its own little thing. And if you're not familiar with something like ESC and, and the, just some simple little things like that, well, it's yep. simple if you know what the guys are talking about. Totally. But it's hard. And that's the reason that's what I try to focus on is not just throwing words in the air and assuming everybody knows what I'm talking about. Right. Right. And I think that's a good message for your channel. I think that's the next question is basically your message is exactly what you just said, you know, to project and give out this information. And like I said, you put it in layman's terms, which I really, really like. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've I used to read a magazine called QST. I'm a ham radio operator and 
I'd read an article, a beginner's article for antennas, for mobile HF antennas. <laughs> it's it's one engineer talking to other engineers. It's not a beginner, an entry level video. So I, I'm I'm way under what a lot of the guys in the hobby are. But for the people that are just wanting to get on board, yeah. I'm trying to make it to where they can get up to speed without throwing money at stuff that they don't need or right. or don't want. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the WL Toys is, I mean, they've hit a good mark, a good little niche within our niche, right. you know, to get started on. Because it, like you said, it is hobby grade, and it's rare finding a car under 100 bucks that's hobby grade, that's right. up, upgradable, and that can, you know, it could take a good lick in that car, you know, I mean, for, for its price point. So, um, I mean, if there's any negatives to the side of RC today, do you see any anything like that today? The, the the difference between some of these cars and some of the stuff that you pick up at the hobby store, um, if you break something, you can go to the hobby store and buy another one right. today, maybe yeah. in an hour. OK, mm -hmm. with this stuff, it's not quite that way. You've got to wait on stuff. But I mean, there's there's a few people on eBay that uh, that have parts in stock and what they do, they they buy new cars and they disassemble them. And uh, so. Yep. They've they've got the stuff right there on hand, yep. which you're paying the same, basically the same price you would if you bought it from China, but you can have it in a few days instead of a month. You know, that's, that, that's true, the yeah. biggest thing. But that's that's what I see. I mean, a, a friend of mine had a little Traxxas, Traxxas um, monster truck, broke the engine mount. Well, it was on a Sunday, so even the local hobby store was closed. So I went out in the shop and got on the milling machine and made an aluminum. Oh, one. look at that. Yeah. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, he was back, you know, back in service and it never has, that was 10 years ago and it never broke again. Oh, that's awesome. It, it wasn't cast. It was actually made out of uh, several pieces of aluminum. So, you know, oh, just wow. stuff like that. That's, that's the kind of stuff for me. That's fun. I love to tinker. Yeah. I love to modify the 144001. I've got three of them. <laughs> one that's bone stock yep. and, and will stay that way. One that I do brushless experiments on because, and it's not for me. I'm happy with the one that's stock, right. but for, for the guys that are wanting to do stuff. And I did something on this last one. I did something a little different. Everybody else is going with a 3650, 3652, a big brushless motor. I wanted to go to a small brushless motor. One, because I hadn't seen anybody else do it. So I didn't know if it would work or how it would work. And I'm right. doing 45 miles an hour on 2S. And I think there's more there. That's great. You know? So the one, and and it's, it's that little tiny motor and it's it's <laughs> zippy too you know so it's not like you got to have a you know two mile runway to get it going yeah i would be interested to see if they do come out with a truggy of that wl toys version right you know, maybe a little bit longer chassis uh you know that's if they don't i will <laughs> that's it we'll make the chassis there you go that's awesome now if there's anything say in the rc community could improve upon do you have an opinion with that? You, is there anything you think today is, you know, in you know, the, the, the biggest thing is for, uh, I understand brand loyalty, you know, yeah. but some of the guys bash, oh, that's just a toy. Well, you know, if you've, to some people it is, but yeah. to some people it's an entry into a hobby, which is to my point earlier, if you've got a thousand bucks and you can just throw it in the air and it doesn't matter where it lands, go buy anything you you want to buy but what happens sometimes people go buy something and they think well this is it's not as much fun as it looked like it was on tv or or on youtube youtube yeah. well kevin kevin goes and launches stuff 50 60 80 foot in the, in the air you know and crashes yeah. it and then the company sending replacement parts so right. or a new car well right, right. but when you do that then all of a sudden you find out you've got to repair it yourself. And that mm -hmm. kind of takes the, the fun away the third or fourth time when you've paid three times what the car cost initially right. and it wasn't cheap to start with. Yep. You I know? totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing that I see is, is people try to emulate some of the things that they see on YouTube with right. the, with the basher guys. And, and, and I'm not bashing them, man, if you want to you know launch your car, if that's fun for you, go for it. But you need to understand and the new people getting into the hobby need to understand right. that that there's a price that you pay for that. You you know you 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 pay to play. It so, is yeah. It's it could be a money pit. You know be. I I've I've been I guess I guess I guess I could say I've been somewhat 
gentle with my cars. I mean, I run them. I love speed running them. And, you know, my big Creighton that I have, the one-fifth scale. And I've been – this is all my own money. Uh, nobody – I'm not sponsored or anything. I don't get these these cars or trucks for free or anything. Uh, so it's my money. And, yeah, in the back of my head, I'm like, all right, that Creighton's 900 bucks. Right. You know, and then the right. batteries, after batteries, I'm over $1,000 in this truck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, I can make a ramp and, and launch it up, which I've, I've done a couple times. And, you know, after a while, I'm like, all right, you know what? If I break something, it's not cheap, you know, and it's and it's also time. You know, I'm a busy guy. I own my own business. So I'm, I'm factoring time in there. So, you know, a lot of people today, too, you know, we they're used to creature comforts. We got everything handed to us today, especially with even new cars. Right. Like no one tinkers with their new cars anymore. Um, right. So, you know, I, I've read on some of the forums where these guys, once they break the cars, they don't even bother fixing them. They just go out and get another car. Right. Um, and to me, it's like I, I do like to wrench on them and fix them up and, and get them rolling again because it's there's a reward there, right? Right, right. Well, as of right now, this is <laughs> my supplier and my sponsor is my wife. You know, she there allows <laughs> me to do all of this crazy stuff and that's I awesome. get too crazy about it. Yeah, so, okay. well, you, if as a matter of fact, I mean, it's like that's where my Gen 7 came from. Uh, when Hobby Town, we had our local Hobby Town closed, they consolidated in two stores into one and uh, they did a 25% off. So she went and she picked up a Gen 7, um, an Outcast, a 4S Outcast, and a 6S yeah. Typhon. And, yeah. you know, I was trying to decide which one I wanted. She says, well, just get all three, you know? Well, you got the video on this, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a video on my channel. It says something about my wife raided Hobby Town or something on the thumbnail. I don't remember <laughs> what it is. Uh -huh. But and then she got the chargers and the batteries and all that stuff. That was a bunch of bucks that day, you know. Yeah. But and, and I like those cars. So I'm not saying, you know, WL Toys is ooh, that's the king. I'm just right. saying it's a good entry point because you can walk away from it if you decide eh, it wasn't really for me. You're into it for a hundred bucks. Hey, so you didn't break the bank too much, exactly. Right. That's exactly. Now, that being said, when you went shopping and you got all these cars, do you today have a favorite RC? Probably my uh, JTO, my, nitrous, uh, my Nitro uh, JTO. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a 3.3. It's the one I drive the least. Okay. But I, I love the sound and I love the smell of Nitro. Mm -hmm. I just, I love it. Yeah. But I can't drive it. It's too noisy. Is that is that what it is, or it's, it's just too? You need well, a huge area. It's well, both. It's very noisy, um, and I, you know I like it a lot more than my neighbors. I'll say it that way. And okay. the one place that I had, it's got a two-speed transmission. The one place that I had that was big enough to to let it stretch out and do its thing. I mean, it goes into second gear at like forty-two or something like that, and tops out at about seventy-five. There's faster stuff in electric. But I like the sound. I like I like the tactical feedback through my yeah. ears, you know. Okay. And I like the sound of the transmission when it grabs a gear. So nice. And that's the same thing with the fifth scale. It's got a tuned exhaust on it, two cycle, twenty nine cc gas engine, and uh, it's just a one speed transmission on that. But it sounds just like a dirt bike. The Hodaka, uh, if you remember those Hodaka uh, Wombat, it was one hundred twenty five cc kind of a entry-level race bike and i'm not i made somebody with a whole doc of mad but <laughs> that that's kind of the way i saw those things and okay. i mean that's what this little car sounds like and i like this one too but can't drive it either because of the noise factor wow yeah well that's what's nice about some of the cars i mean i i remember getting out of the hobby i guess because gas was getting very popular i never got into gas um and i remember gas got popular like in maybe like the, what, the early 90s and it was kind of taken over RC car action. I mean, almost every issue I got, it was really targeting gas. Mostly, and yeah, point, yeah. And I was jumping into high school at that point. So I was losing interest in the RCs. Um, but now today, I mean, with this brushless stuff, smoking the gas cars, uh, and they're like little Teslas now, right? I mean, technically right. speaking. Right, right. Um, it's just like you said, the, the technology is uh, is phenomenal. So um if you were to give a newbie some advice today i know we probably covered a few of those things uh but you know what would that be if someone is new to jump into the hobby today what's what's something you can, you can tell my them? thing my thing is to evaluate 
honestly where you can drive it that you can get to in a reasonable amount of time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like that's, that's what I say, if you, you, oh, this fifth scale, this is, this is the bomb. Okay, great. Where are you going to drive it? Yeah. And, and if you don't have an answer for that, then that's not the car for you. Right. Evaluate the location, evaluate the, the amount of time you want to put into it and understand what the, the new LiPo batteries, um, all of these cars come with a little charger, but you've got one battery that's going to take an hour and a half to charge and anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to run it dead. Right. So you're going to need multiple batteries. So these are just little, little factors that you want to, if you're going to come in from, from whatever your other thing is work or school or whatever, and you've got 15 or 20 minutes to run a car, that's fine. Get, just get the car, one battery, you don't need any wrenches, any tools, and just go mm -hmm. run the car. Be careful with it. I, I'm rougher on these cars when I when I do them for the YouTube channel right. than I typically would if they were just mine. Right, right. Just me out running for a, a fun day of driving. I'm testing these things so other people kind of understand what the limitations of these vehicles are. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of, that's my little thing. Okay, that's my contribution. To the to the new people that are coming into the hobby is I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this and if you get this this yeah. is kind of where you're gonna end up. So oh that's excellent that's good. That's really that's good. my that's my game plan right now. Where where it's gonna go in the future I don't know. I, you know, I bought the Typhon and the first thing I lo learned about the Typhon is it had a tendency to want to roll really easy. So I put a truggy I, I, I did a truggy mod on it. Yeah. Well you saw that at the sand dunes. Yep yep. You know. I took that out there to the, but see, that's, those are fun for me, mm -hmm. but I don't get to drive them as much as the little ones. Right. It's, I, I, I totally agree with you. So that, that's, that's the biggest factor. Figure out realistically, where can you drive a car? Once you figure out where you can drive, how much room you need, then you can get a car that fits that scale. I mean, there's, there's 24th and 132nd cars that if you just have your driveway, that you can have fun with. You got the drift vehicles. They don't have mm -hmm. to move very fast. Yep. And you can you can really build up a skill set with a drift car. Yeah. So very cool. There's there's something in here for everybody. And how just, long have you been jabbing at your YouTube channel now? A year. A year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And do you have like a goal for it? I mean, do you is there a few, you know, five year plan. Is there something like that that you have? And what do you expect out of YouTube? Uh, right now, my my deal is just I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Now, uh, I'm I'm at work a hundred hours a week, so I have one day off, and this oh this my is God. my day off right now. <laughs> so that's the reason I don't put out any more videos than I do, is because my you know, I've got a wife and a dog, which just got stung <laughs> in the face with a bee. Oh, so, yeah. We, yeah, we've put a, invested a lot of time in him the past couple of days. But uh, but literally, I'm at my at my work for over 100 hours a week. So wow. everything I do gets condensed down into working around my work schedule. I'm going to work probably at the job I'm at. I've been for, with the same company for 35 years. I drive an 18 wheeler for everybody that doesn't know. Um, I make three, two day trips, um, from Colorado to Montana. So that's, that's kind of my deal right there. And I've got like a five year window to retire. So mm -hmm. whatever happens in this next five years with YouTube, I've got another channel. I, I think with YouTube for, to get, the algorithm's attention, you have to kind of focus in on something. What I'm hoping over time is that uh, it would be nice to have, I mean, sponsors, I don't know, but uh, suppliers that say, hey, we want you to review this. Sure. And that would be nice that because every, every vehicle that's on my channel has been purchased with my own money. And I got quite a, you know, a variety of different things. I've primarily focused on the 144001 because that's the I'll say the biggest interest in entry level stuff right now seems to be on that car. Yeah. So sure. I'm trying to show people this is what this car is capable of and you know, yeah. we'll kind of go from there but five year plan would be nice <laughs> if if some stuff came in for me to review without without this having uh -huh. to, to yep. fetch them, you know?
But that's if it does, it doesn't. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I enjoy what I'm doing. I I have a limited amount of knowledge, but it's more than some entry people have. Right. And I can share that with them. And that's, you know, there's guys that are, woo, they're, you know, sure. they're off the charts on this stuff. Uh, Rick Uberbash is one of the guys on the Arma stuff. I mean, he's yeah. whew, way up here. Yep. Okay. I'm not trying to take his place. Right. I'm just right. trying to do my little thing. You want to get into the hobby. This is an easy way to get in. And most likely that's where my focus is going to be. I have other cars that I have just for me that I don't really I haven't even unboxed the Creighton and I haven't unboxed <laughs> the Gen 7. I've, I've had them for six months or something. Oh, wow. So yeah, my, my time is so limited, I, I just haven't made time to do that. Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I, I mean, I did an intro video for my RC channel, basically said the same thing. I'm like, I'm no expert. We're just here to have a friendly conversation. And I know there's guys that like both sides, whether it's, you know, the TRAXXAS, if... I'm allowed to say that. I don't know why some guys can't say Traxxas on their channel. I don't know. I don't get that. So if anybody wants to leave a comment in the you section. Want, you want to know where that came from? They compared a Traxxas vehicle or they compared another vehicle and called it a mini Traxxas. Oh. And that's that's kind of where that came from. I saw the video that I think you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and and so that's what happened is they they kind of made a claim that this was a mini Traxxas. So it's not mm. against the law to say Traxxas, and if you have a Traxxas, I yeah. have one. I mean, I can show it on there, but that's they they made a direct comparison saying this is, you know, right. so they just kind of got, got crossways. Yeah, I never got that, and some people are just, you know, and what's a shame is, I mean, I even I. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you do a review of a Traxxas product and God forbid it's maybe not to their liking. Uh, they they step in, I hear. I, maybe I'm wrong. I did hear that through the grapevine. But, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I, I don't own one yet, so I'm sure they're a wonderful company. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just one of the things I heard. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, you know, like I said, I'm no expert. I'm jumping back in the hobby. You know, I got automotive knowledge. I know how to tinker. I know how to, you know, improvise, create things, and build things. So I'm using that outside knowledge that I have for restoring right. vintage Volkswagens to jump in on these cars and give helpful hints and tin, uh, tips, you know, to to my viewers, you know. so And there's uh, some things that carry over, too. I mean, like with sure. – uh, some of the stuff you do on a Volkswagen may carry over to a Mustang. And that's why right. I, I like to look at a variety of channels because what I, I like woodworking. And yeah. one of the things that I have noticed over the years is, is this guy, he's sharing all this information with you, but there's one little thing that he thinks is his magic bullet that he doesn't, he doesn't share with other people. Mm-hmm. But it's not the same, this guy's magic bullet. So he tells you about the thing that this guy glosses over, and this guy tells you about the thing that this guy glosses over. But if you watch 30 or 40 different people, you kind of get all the pieces, and you yeah. can tie them together yourself. Yeah, I, I say that a lot on my other channel where I said, you know, there's not really one right or wrong way to do something, and someone might have a different technique on how to do something else. So, no, let's let's be transparent and have an open forum here, and let's just chat, right. you know. So, right. yeah, basically that's – and I'm in the same boat as you. You know, I got a, another YouTube channel. I got a full-time business, so I'm, my time is limited to my RC channel. But, uh, you know, right now I'm just having fun. And um, I think we both just crossed the 1,000 uh, subscriber mark. I just hit it this past weekend. Right, so, right. You know, congratulations on that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I never thought anything of it, you know. But uh, just one day I woke up in January. I said, you know, I'm going to start a channel. And uh, I didn't know what I was getting into. I figured, you know, there is a ton of RC channels out there. Right. But, you know, hey, let's, we're here to have fun. But, um, Dave, I'm so happy you were able to uh, come on this interview with me. I think it turned out real cool. And uh, if anybody wants to hit up Dave, again, it's RC Mod Squad on YouTube. And then do you, do you have a Facebook or no? I, I, I do, but I, I just don't get on it very much. And it is RC. It's it's RC Mod Squad. I mean, if I see a little number down there, I'll try to jump on it. Okay, so the best place to reach you is through YouTube? Yeah, probably just on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's excellent. So, well, 
guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell and do the same for dave and uh hit that bell so you get an email notification that we put a new video up but uh i really appreciate it dave thank you so much and uh guys we will see you next time take yeah, care. you bet take care and we'll catch everybody down the road all right <laughs>